What are some red flags in a job interview? When the pay that is advertised is suddenly different in the interview. Ah, yes, the old, what's a few thousand dollars between friends routine. Interview a while back where the ad said 40 to 50 thousand. Get there, and the interviewer is like, there was a mistake made, it's 12 dollars an hour. Years ago, I applied for a job at Taco Bell. The manager set up a day in time for me, and we sat down in the dining room, and he talked about his life for well over an hour. His ex-wives, his old band, the thrills of hitchhiking. Then he shook my hand and said, whenever we get an opening, I'll keep you in mind. I got suckered into listening to life story for no job. What's my starting salary slash pay? You make as much as you want. Nope out of there. If you work hard, you could make an incredible amount of money. So, what's the base salary? We have guys making xx dollars per month. So, what's the base salary? There's no limit, so you can make as much as you want. Um, no. Often if they promise quick promotions, you'll be a senior manager in 6 months, you should leave. The reason for the quick promotions is that the job sucks and has a high turnover. I've seen another side to this too, people told, we can only employ you initially at, level below where you should be, for, reasons. However, you should expect to be promoted quickly to, where you should have been all along, as we're a fast promoting company. You could realistically be, and realistically senior, in just 2 to 3 years. Those promotions do not materialize. We work hard and play hard. Translation. We will work 12 to 14 hour days and everyone is an alcoholic. We work hard, and we play hard. Or any variation of that. I learned that lesson. To me it meant, you're going to work a lot of 60 plus hours weeks with no OT or comp time. You might be working random nights and or weekends. We might deny a vacation request that you put in nearly 6 months in advance. But once in a while we'll take all of you guys to the Mexican restaurant down the street and pay for lunch. Expecting an unhealthy work-life balance is a real turn-off. I once went to an interview for an engineering job where they said things like, 37 hours a week is standard, but our employees enjoy it here so much they do 60 hours a week. Some even work on a Saturday. Our employees are like swans. Graceful on the surface, but they never stop paddling with their legs. Nope, I don't want to burn out by 32 years old. They get defensive when you ask about overtime, vacation, or benefits. Had an interviewer say that they do fixed price contracts and never missed a deadline. Asked about overtime, and was told, well, if we need you on a Friday we'll ask you to stay late, because it's your job. Hard pass. When they hire everyone in the group interview. Even the idiots. Signifies a high turnover of employees, and if you're a casual, they'll get rid of you once the busy season is over. And if you can't spot the idiot, I've got bad news for you son. When they ask you if you have any questions for them, and you ask, what is your favorite thing about your job slash working for this company? And they reply, well, I'm not the one being interviewed, proceeds to answer, and then says, was that good enough for you? Immediately made me realize that even if I did get a job offer, I did not want to work for someone like that. When you see a lot of candidates in the waiting room, and or it's a group interview in my experience. Duck group interviews. I refuse. Yep. Only interview I walked out on. It just seemed weird, and I thought, if they make new candidates do this weird shit, I don't want to see what they put their employees through. When the interviewer isn't there, and the people who are, know nothing about the fact you're scheduled for one. I once drove an hour and a half for an interview, which I had literally called right before I left, confirming the time. She had left for the day and wouldn't be returning. Tried calling me multiple times desperately to reschedule. Nope. They started asking me if I was married, if my significant other worked full time, and if we were ever planning to have kids. Edit, I'm a gal. I was probably 25 or 26 at the time. Those questions are straight up illegal. When you ask, what do you like about working at company? And they avoid the question or give answers like, well, this is really great city to live in. 
If they can't tell you what they like about the work culture or what they like about the job, then chances are it's not a great place to work. This is a good one. I was interviewing at a defense contractor in Texas, and the position required relocation. I asked your question, and what I got in return basically amounted to serving the country and helping save military lives, etc etc. Great. Because it required relocation, I asked the similar follow up, what do you like about living in X? Response, we have a really strong community purpose here to serve the war fighters. Basically the best part of living in nowhere Texas, was working for a company where the best part was that your job was patriotic. If they don't allow vacation time, or it's not encouraged. Was going to interview for a company not too long ago. Asked the recruiter about vacation time. The response was that there was no official vacation time policy, and that you basically just work it out with your team to make sure there is coverage for client work. Ended that prospect pretty quick. Are you willing to work off the clock? Sure. Are you willing to pay under the table? If they don't answer you directly as to why the person in the position before you left. If they allow phone calls to them during the interview, or if people just walk into the office and interrupt. If you tour the office with a supervisor, and people all of a sudden look fearful or pretend to suddenly be busy. If you are interrogated instead of interviewed. You should have a conversation with your interviewer, not just rattle of questions. If they have absolutely no original questions, where do you see yourself in 5 years, what's your biggest strength slash weakness, why do you want to work here, etc. The interviewer is very late. I'm an HR at a nursing home. My director of nursing sometimes leaves people waiting for 30 to 45 minutes. Then can't understand why they don't accept the offer. She feels like HR is not qualified to interview nurses, although my HR director has been doing this for 30 years. So we are forced to make people wait. Yeah, as an RN, I'm walking out of there after 25 minutes. If you expect my time management skills to be impeccable, and don't lead by example, it's clearly a terrible leadership in the facility. Just had this one today. After your 30 day probation period, you will get your first paycheck. My ass. When you have to pay money to begin, because you need a special license slash product or whatever. You should be reimbursed for licensing in my opinion. Any job where I've needed an additional license or two, I was always either reimbursed or the cost was just paid for me up front. I would say a place that promotes themselves as a family. They'll end up attempting to use it against you in the future, and let's be honest, it is business, not personal. Ah, so true. Got a job as a hotel receptionist where everyone was family. They routinely made me and the other receptionists work maid service in our nice clothes and uncomfortable shoes, because everyone helped each other out, while also still covering reception. Like they would make us run up and down the floors cleaning rooms and greeting guests. An actual nightmare. That interview ended with a variation of, we're family, we take care of each other. Do you mean to watch out for in the interviewer or interviewee? For the interviewer, getting agitated with you for asking fairly basic questions, like what the culture is like, what they like about the place, what makes someone successful in the role. It indicates that they either can't honestly answer those questions without getting negative, or that they won't view you as a team member. For the interviewee, cockiness slash overestimation of how important your skills are. I used to hire tech in Seattle. People right out of college would act like the hottest shit for knowing how to code. Entry level coders are a dime a dozen in Seattle. Still worth hiring, but not with that attitude. I had a guy who hadn't had a coding job before. Give me a number for desired salary that literally made me laugh out loud, covered the phone to do it. Asked how he came to that number, it's what his cousin, a 5 year programmer at Google, was making. This job was for a local education company. You know nothing about the value of your skills if you would pay a year 1 programmer at a local company, as a 5 year programmer at Freaks My Google. When they make you wait for an hour after the scheduled interview time before they talk with you. When they make you wait in the employee's break room where paint is peeling off the walls, the table and chairs are beat to crap and there's a hole in one wall. When they tell you you seem to be a good candidate to be hired, but oh wait, 
You need to take a computer personality test now. Sorry. You did great up until you failed the test. Hope you enjoyed that waste of 2 plus hours. Ducking Kmart. We're like family here, is something often said by bosses who must have grown up with shitty families, because they basically mean, I'm going to say and do unprofessional shit and get personally upset if you let me down. No thanks, I'd prefer a simple exchange of my time and labor for monetary compensation and benefits without any feelings, my actual parents and I are on great terms. If the company did something illegal, how would you handle it? Someone that was hired at my MIL's current workplace was asked this question. In sales interviews, when the interviewer asks you to sell something on the desk. A cup or something. It's lazy interviewing. Once I had an interview where they asked me why there was a gap year since my last job, and I told them I had a child and wanted to take some time with him before getting back to work. The interviewer kept saying, but I don't understand this year off, and you can't explain it. I will wait till you can justify that year off. I tried to explain again, and when she said that again, and said I should not lie, I said, okay, I think we're done, I have no desire to work with you, and left while she was getting started on a lecture about how I shouldn't lie, because interviewers can see right through me. I still don't understand why she thought it was a lie. I mean, I had the year old kid to prove it. You have a long distance video interview and three quarters of the way through it, the company rep mentions there are six other people in the room listening in, but you can't see or hear them. Yeah? No. If it sounds like the interviewer knows little about the specifics of the skills you are bringing, expect them to never actually understand it. This is probably going to be typical of the company, and you will never be respected. I was a photographer for a used car company. I frequently had to explain that I couldn't photograph faster without losing quality, got very little assistance and had to wander the lots trying to find cars by myself, wasting more the time they were complaining about, got the nickname of Kubrick, and eventually got my position eliminated when they decided to just have the dealers take photos on their cell phones. A black faux leather couch. Edit, hijacking my own comment to tell a recent job interview story. I was going for a digital marketing job. There was obviously lots of talk about social media marketing and strategy. We discussed the concept of going viral. I told a story of how I'd previously been on the front page of Reddit, and got on television when my roommates had renovated my room. I suggested the interviewers check it out. I left the interview and didn't think about it for a few hours. And then I thought, if they google me, they'll probably end up back at my Reddit account. I hope I haven't written some ducked up shit lately for them to stumble upon. So I logged into my reddit account and looked at the most recent comment I'd written. It was a response to an ask reddit thread titled, what is something the younger generation are going to struggle with? I had replied as a joke, with my donk. Never heard back from them. Second edit, no, I didn't give them a link to my reddit account. But if you google my name, news articles come up that link to the reddit thread. If the interviewer isn't prepared, and or is late 10 plus minutes. I've gone to an interview where the two interviewers sat there asking each other, what questions are we asking? What position is this for? Right in front of me. If I spent the last 3 to 5 days preparing for this interview in my spare time, I'm a software developer, so all my interviews are technical, and I like to be over prepared, then I expect my interviewer to know what's going on, be prepared and somewhat on time. I didn't take time off work for you to donk me around. I had an engineering internship job interview for a huge global mega corporation, whose name I will not name. In the interview, basically I was yelled and was all but called stupid. The interviewer was extremely aggressive, and took jabs at all of my answers. I got the job, which involved signing a contract that involved me getting training and working for a minimum amount of time after graduation. The company in exchange would pay for your tuition, and if you quit until your contract is up or you got fired, you'd have to pay the tuition back. Long story short, things slowly, but surely went downhill as I started. Me and a lot of people hired alongside me quit just before graduation. Turns out nothing is free, and if you sign a contract where you could potentially owe money to your employer, 
your employer will take advantage of that. All things considered that interview where treated like shit was a major red flag I ignored.